Welcome back, Coil, back to Click Team Tutorial over the UWP Exporter. Um, it is the Universal Windows Platform Exporter for creating Xbox games and Windows 10 games. If you have a project that you're trying to debug, this tutorial will be extremely helpful. We have a joystick here right now that we're going to be exporting over to an Xbox One. First things first, we're going to change the UWP or the project type to UWP project and over in the settings you want to turn off the virtual mouse and I will show you why later with a with the first thing that I exported over to my Xbox um, all this information up here I wouldn't really mess with besides the version number obviously because your games are gonna have updates and patches as such but that's all information that was populated from Visual Studio um, when you build you're going to come up with the dialog box. I'm not going to rebuild the project since I already have it built, but you'll create your project name. So like for me, I'll have Brotastic and then the path that you determine, I decided to put mine on my desktop. Once you have that folder, you're going to open up Visual Studio. And if you don't have Visual Studio, you'll have to download in order to open it and you're going to open a folder. So the second option. And okay, and we are going to open up desktop, and we're going to open up my. Whoops, there we go. Here it is. We're going to open up your folder. So click the folder and select the folder. It will load the project into Visual Studio. And this actually might take a while due to the specs on my laptop, which is what I'm currently using. And so once you load it up, you're going to have this solution explorer, which lists everything in your folder from ClickTeam. Um, this right here is your actual application of JavaScript project. So we're going to go up to the folder. We're going to select the folder and click this button, the solutions and folders button and it will load your application into Visual Studio. And as you can see, it's loading the solution project for our UWP export folder. And this, there will be no link for this download or anything, um, seeing that it's just a walkthrough tutorial rather than something that I would normally do like with Firefly where you can actually look at the coding. There is no coding for this. It's just ha a how-to video, if that made any sense. And once you finish loading your project, you're going to have a new layout somewhat. I guess you can say that. Um, we're going to right-click the, the Universal Windows JavaScript project. That's what the JS stands for. And we want to go to properties. Whoops. I should really invest in a faster computer. It's the wrong one. Come on. There we go. Okay, and we're going to go to the debugging tab. And my information is already populated because I've done this before, I'm pretty sure, with um, this folder just to make sure it actually worked. But um, you want to change this required authentication. It's going to show Windows when you first do this. You want to change that to Universal and enter your machine name. My Xbox is named Xbox One, but you can also enter the console IP address in order for that to work. And we're going to change this. It might say local. Um, you want to change it to remote machine. And we'll go ahead and run that, and it'll start to debug. As you can see, it, as you can see, it says build started. And I'm going to come over here and start streaming to my Xbox. I'm 
that way when it does load up, I'll already be there. Oops, that's... that's first thing I actually uh, exported. Um, this is the developer console. Um, you'll have to actually download this application in order to get your Xbox like this, and you have to sign in with your email address that you're using for Visual Studio in order to get your games onto your Xbox. As you can see, my Quill Studio um, email is listed as a testing account, which is what my actual um, account up here, Dreaded Bubble 763, is or 768, is listed as. Don't add that, it's literally just a testing account. Um, and the Microsoft Office, or sorry, the Microsoft website that Click Team has linked actually tells you how to go through all that. I kind of winged it because I'm just that kind of person, honestly. But um, you will need to link Visual Studio with your Xbox using the Visual Studio pin, as you can see here. And then there's settings, you can set up your home con or your uh, home page however you want. Your games and apps will come down here. As you can see, I've been working on Brotastic. Um, I just had Murder Castle open. That was something that I was just seeing, or that was something I used just to see if I can get the animations and everything working on that Xbox. And so I'm gonna check on Visual Studio right quick. Okay, it's updating the layout. It's still trying to get it over to Xbox. There we go. And this is the splash screen. You can actually edit this. Um, after I go through a couple of applications, I'll show you how to edit it. It's taking a while to load. There we go. Alright, as you can see, the um, I have a Xbox controller in my hand that's connected to my Xbox One. And you can see that when I move the right analog stick, it actually moves with it. All you can see on the screen. Um, all the buttons are mapped out. With the exception of the home button. Um, the triggers are actually um, positioniometers, I believe. So it returns a value rather than a binary input. Which is why you can see those. Um, it's like a counter bar, kind of like health bar in reverse. And I'm just going to stop that. Come back to click team. Alright, so. This is the coding in this example file that I had. But, as you can see, we have this disabled. I forgot to show you that. Go back to my Xbox right quick. And if I was to let's go to Murder Castle, you can see that mouse pop up. That's um what we disabled, and that's actually not working. Just quit everything real quick. That's weird. Okay, as you can see, I I moved the character around with the with both the D-pad and the analog stick, but when I use the analog stick, there's a cursor that moves around with the character. And just by disabling that, you get rid of that cursor. Because as far as I understand, it's kind of binary overall. It's not like you can choose to have it on on one frame and off on another. That's a application thing rather than a frame setting. But, um, buttons are binary, as you can see. Button A is press, not press. B is press, not press, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the shoulders are also binary inputs. Kind of like repeat when mouse is pressed, or mouse is clicked. The triggers return a value. As you can see in the coding, it sets the counter value to a trigger value. So, if you want to use the trigger for a shooting mechanism, then you'll have to make sure, or you'll have to grab the value that it's returning and compare it to let's say 70 so if the trigger value is over 70 and then shoot something like that that's how I have protastic coded anyway uh, d-pads are binary so either yes it's being pressed or no it's not being pressed same thing with the back and start buttons the sticks are values again the um, horizontal value and the vertical value 
of both being, um, I believe, I want to say 100 positive and negative on both. And then you can press the 6 in. Uh, if you're on PlayStation, it'll be called uh, like R3 and uh, L3. And you can also set the vibration. So um, as you can see, this vibration is set for both motors, the left motor and the right motor. Xbox controllers have two motors. Um, 75% power for two seconds, and then this is 100% power for two seconds. But that ranges from zero to 100, so you can play with that, have fun with that, and suit it to your needs. Um, like you can say you're getting shot at, you can uh, set a DK. So you can set the power of the motor to an equation to make it kind of trickle off. Um, that's pretty much it for, as far as debugging um, purposes. Just to get your game on the Xbox to see how it work. Because, for example, Brotastic. I'll just show you a little bit of my code. I have this line in Brotastic that controls the um, background scroll, and I have to have two of them, so let's deactivate that and activate this. And with the original version, which is what you'll see on um, Windows, Mac, HTML, I or not iOS, um, and Android, if it loads. And what you'll see, it has a, um, verti not vertical, a diagonal, um, scroll. So you can see it's going down and left. Whereas on Xbox, for some reason, that doesn't work as it should. So it has this scroll instead. It's just a sideways scroll. And I'm actually going to play a little bit for you from my Xbox. Because there are a few things. Um, the buttons are binary, but it's not a... Um, single red binary it's a continuously red binary if that makes any sense so as long as you have the button pressed down the value will return one so you'll have to set up some kind of way to set that cushion to read between different presses for example when you press whoops when you press x you don't want to continuously read x because say you're trying to go through a setup everything will just be selected the first option will be selected you have to have some kind of wait time. As for me, I set up flag, so when the button is first pressed, it turns on the flag, and then in 10 seconds, or 10 milliseconds, that flag is turned off. As you can, uh, let's go to characters, that's the easiest way to see. I'm just holding the D-pad, and you can see there's kind of a slight hesitation between going between characters. And this is actually the wrong game mode. see that the I'm actually using the trigger in or, and to shoot and I have it halfway it doesn't shoot I have it set to 70 75 percent of the way something like that I go back to Justice Runner or go to Running Gun. This is what I was talking about. As you can see, the the background actually shows, and then once the last 
row gets down to the bottom, it'll just jump back up. I'm not sure what's causing that, but this is why. This is why testing your uh, games are, is always important. Anyway, that's enough of that. I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, I will start making some tip videos for Firefly, such as animations. If you've seen um, a, a him update, you'll notice that my door is open up like doors instead of sliding up like in the initial version that I had. Um, and I've also added kind of like an examine um, block of coding to it where if you're in the forest, you have to find a picture and look at it. There's nothing on it just because I wasn't that far yet but um I, I just thought you guys deserved an update about my game but you can pick up the piece of paper and actually spin it around so I'll be hopefully uploading videos like that as well as tutorials um in the comment section down below tell me what you guys would like to see I'll try to bring it out I'm sorry it's been so long just been dealing with a lot and thank you guys for watching